My name is Kevin Poulter and I've been in radio for many years. I started at Pi Telecommunications in Clayton. They made two-way radios for taxi cabs, uh, fire brigades, commercial use, um, all the sort of uses that you had that weren't possible because there were no mobile phones. When I started, uh, valves were still in use and they gradually phased them out during my 12-year career there. Over the years, I've been involved in radio in various ways, journalism, photography, and currently uh, global PR for an electronics company. I keep a collection of photographic and uh, documentary uh, items on the early days of radio, in fact, going right back to Edison and Bell and some of the uh, people that began what is now Radio Today. I also write for a number of magazines, but principally Silicon Chip because they're Australia's only electronics magazine. A definition of electronics is a very interesting one. I'd say anything where electrons move through a circuit, which uh, can is usually copper, but it can be other mediums, even liquids. And uh, over the years, there's been some very smart people that have developed radio. And uh, I'm a member of the Historical Radio Society of Australia, who uh, collect and restore and maintain uh, vintage radio. Certainly my interest, though, is, is in the harnessing of it through radio and uh, microphones and the like. I believe the beginning of electronics was around Edison and Bell's time and some of the te telegraphy uh, people uh, and certainly that's where it became in widespread use and where the electrons were harnessed to send messages and to be of great value to people. Uh, it was almost predating the actual um, electrical circuits or supply of mains power to houses and uh, people certainly benefited by getting messages within minutes instead of days or even weeks. Well, I started in electronics um, probably because my father gave me a transistor radio when I was about 14, and it was the best present I'd ever had, I think. Another Christmas, I was lucky to, enough to get one of the earliest uh, domestic, really good working uh, tape recorders. It was called a Ferguson. So I had my transistor radio and the tape recorder and I'm a firm believer that often that sometimes the things you experience as a kid uh, can influence your future career and it certainly did mine. Then I saw a job uh, where a person was needed at Pi Telecommunications which was um, a short bicycle ride from where I was. And I went to apply and they showed me right round the factory and before I knew it, the um, production manager was saying to me, well, can you start Monday? And that was uh, the situation with employment at the time, though. Uh, anyone that was um, quite good at uh, their academic levels uh, could walk into a job. Now they're accused of people with diplomas and the like. They, after a while, said, uh, look, we have a vacancy for an apprentice and went to RMIT in Melbourne where they had a specialist radio school and uh, spent a lot of time in there learning about uh, radio and television and transmission. Much of their training was on valves, but they were trying to do the modern thing and show us a bit about transistors as well and became uh, experienced at electronics uh, with a qualification later on going into the office doing export shipping and order processing and other areas within the company. One of my first projects was uh, making a mixer amplifier and because I worked at Pi Telecommunications they had uh, chassis with already stamped out valve sockets more than what I needed for a mixer amplifier, but a beautiful thing to start the project. And I looked at uh, magazines like Radio TV and Hobbies and Philips Application Notes and the like, and drew up a circuit based on a whole lot of ideas, plus uh, some of the valve manuals told you the currents that should be in the unit and that, and it worked really well. Pi Telecommunications was uh, close to Astor Clayton Works where they made uh, Astor TVs, records and other related uh, entertainment items. 
So many, many hundreds of local people were employed and were able to get jobs there. In the 60s, uh, radio was still a huge business, and AWA and Pi and Astor and other brands like Chrysler were enjoying a, a booming business still. And events like the 1956 Olympics caused a lot of TVs to be sold and, uh, and the introduction of TV itself caused a, a lot of business. When we were working at Pi Telecommunications, uh, Pi had a crystal division and crystals are used for the control of radio frequencies, particularly in transmitters. They're still used in modern televisions, but at the time it was for very accurate transmission of um, two-way radios. And the crystals uh, had to be cut in a certain way, so they vibrated perfectly at a certain frequency and very accurately. These were calculated uh, using slide rules and other now antiquated methods. And then Monash University had a large computer installed and the calculations were done overnight by landline to that computer and uh, the next morning people would come in and see whether all had gone well. If it had, we had the calculations and if it hadn't, it was start again the next night because there can be glitches in landlines. Where I worked at Pi, there were 300 people working there and you could stand on one corner of the building and as far as you could see was manufacturing. From right up the back, the metalwork stamping to in the foreground, the people assembling, right up to the front where managers and order processes um, were situated. And at Pi there were many women involved in the assembly of the two-way radios. They did the job really well and I always admired their uh, work which was so repetitious that most males they didn't have the attention span. They uh, assemble parts of a radio and chat about their family and children to the next person beside them but just occasionally something would cause too much distraction and one day a lady wired a set of capacitors the wrong way around test department turned it on and there was an explosion like a shotgun and smoke throughout the factory of the most pungent smell but overall, I had nothing but admiration for these family women who worked on the production line and uh, did such repetitious small parts of the radios and seemed to uh, manage it quite well. Australia's been a, a mixed bag on quick on the uptake of electronics. Uh, in some ways, the, we're quite slow because we Australians are very, very practical and they want to see that uh, something works first. And that's why at one stage when um, companies had uh, video discs, Australians didn't take to it very well, whereas the Americans did. Uh, I think we could see that there wasn't much future for a medium that you couldn't record on, uh, which was the case at the time and was rather expensive. So Australians have always been quick on the uptake of good ideas and even invented a uh, lot of electronics, but they're uh, very discerning on the practical side of it. I always think that it's most unfortunate when Australia loses production facilities, knowledge and uh, technology. And of course electronics is a huge example of that and there have been other businesses and technologies since. But it's the way things are in a global world these days where uh, businesses uh, come and go and people have three to ten different careers. The difficulty in having an Australian electronics industry is competition. Uh, we're very innovative, but uh, that doesn't help when labour in China is uh, immensely cheaper. So it's often the case that um, if anything's designed here, it's made in China anyway. Though overall there's been a huge decline and everything is designed and made in China. Chinese dominance and manufacturing is just so huge that we can't compete. Like most Australians, they have more than one career through their life and I've adapted my career to uh, still be electronics related but not in the pro direct production and design and manufacturing.